Welcome back to Writing Done Right. And today we do want to talk about an alternative to Scrivener. Uh, not that I think Scrivener is bad. It's just that uh, it no longer supports a native Linux. And since I'm a Linux user, I wanted to have a look at the main alternative. Welcome back to Writing Done Right. I'm Thomas Morosky, an author and a technology consultant. And today we are going to be looking at the Scrivener Alternative Manuscript. So this is effectively a free and open source and cross-platform version of Scrivener. Now, I've not used Scrivener before. I am actually more old school in that I use my uh, I use notebooks. I use written paper in order to do my writing. I just personally think, at least for me, I get writing done better that way. But I am testing out writing some stuff here in manuscript just to give it a better try. I've been playing around with it now for a few weeks, so I want to go ahead and do a video. Of course, Scrivener is one of the premium ways that uh, some people like organizing their writing. If you are looking for a means to organize it, you can basically build character profiles, storylines, set goals, and write everything in it. And uh, just looking at the screen here, it does look like uh, Scrivener is probably a superior product to Manuscript. But for a person like me that I use LibreOffice to uh, write my documents uh, so I can write and format all at once, and I use notebooks and paper to actually organize my thoughts, um, I decided I'd go ahead and give it a try. Now, if I have enough the people that are interested, I might go ahead and uh, see if I can't get Scrivener running on Wine on Linux so that you can uh, use it anyway. And uh, they do have a really nice, uh, generous uh, trial of it. And that's that you can install it and you can try it for, uh, it's like 30 days, uh, but it's not like 30 calendar days when you download it. It's basically 30 times running the application. And so I might think about doing that in the future because it actually does look like a little bit better if no other reason than just the fact that the text editor actually has more than just raw text. The other options, though, it does have. But of course, as I talked about in a recent video, anytime you're looking for alternative software and a person like me, I'm happy using Linux. I'm happy with the tools that I can get on uh, FOSS applications. So if I type in Scrivener, you can see that the top result is Manuscript. Uh, it's a French application. It's available in uh, Windows, Mac, Linux. As far as Linux, you can do it from the repository. You can do flat packs. You can do snaps. So there are um, there are certainly some some uses for it. The application itself, you can have a look over at the website, which is uh, theologeek.ch uh, slash manuscript. And so he has features. Here's the basic features. It does the outlines. There's a distraction free mode. Um, free is in speech because free is always better. There you go. Here's some basic screenshots of it. So um, you can see that uh, it can do a lot of these organization things. You have your, you can do your goals, you can do your character outlines. So there's actually lots of stuff in here that is definitely worth having a look at inside of the platform itself. So let's go ahead and pull this guy up. This is the launch screen. And when you launch it out, you can start with just something empty. You can basically build out your outline or you can just kind of start with uh, something. So here's uh, a trilogy layout. Here's uh, three. Uh, so there's basically three books there in the trilogy. So if you want to do empty uh, research paper, empty nonfiction, you can do that. They do have a demo project here, which is the Book of Acts. And uh, basically just outlining some acts just to kind of show you what it can do. So here's the author there. Here's the title of it, the license of the book. And then here is the, uh, they didn't actually do any summary stuff. Uh, that's actually what I did in uh, my layout. But here's your characters. So you can see they, you can come in here and you can put in notes, detailed information. You can list them as main, uh, secondary, minor, and then the plots. You can enter those in. And then we have the basic world outline. Uh, I didn't actually do that in my sample. Here's the, the basic outline here. So you can organize things out and you can see that there's goals sets and you can see from the color bars where you are inside of your goals. 
And then inside of each one of these, you can see what uh, each section happens to be. There is an editor down here where you can come down. You can see what's in each of those cards, and then you can have a look at the uh, the editor here. Now, what you notice here is that the editor does not have any editing. It doesn't have any formatting, anything like that. That's kind of the negative side. Effectively, everything in here, it's like using uh, writing everything on a text document, where Scrivener does look like it does a much better job of organizing um, organizing your, your information in, in better ways. Now, we also do have the option to compile it. So you can compile it as plain text. You can do a markdown, HTML. You can do a LaTeX, an EPUB, open document. You can do DocX. And then uh, there's some other options that you can uh, choose from on each one of these guys here. So that's actually what, uh, what this guy's looking at. Let me go ahead and open this back up. And I have, let's hit open and desktop and I'm actually organizing my own book in here and so I ended up putting my basic title information I didn't bother with anything else in there I do have different summaries so here's my one sentence summary here's my one paragraph summary this would actually be quite useful for when you need to do a short summary and a long summary for example uh, registering your ISBN with your book uh, then it will ask you for the descriptions of the book and things like that. So this is very useful to have all that in one spot. I identified the different uh, characters one might have. So this is a book about discipleship. We talk about having a mentor, a father or mother in Christ, a fellowship partner, a pastor, a small group leader. And you can see that I put in different goals, uh, different, um, uh, different uh, motivations. This is actually a... a newer version than the one that's on my writing computer. I don't actually have the one sentence summary, one paragraph. I don't remember those anyway. So uh, you can see that you can get in here and you actually move these up uh, based on just the slider bar. So you'll see that that's what moves them into higher or lower categories. I left the plots empty and the world empty, but I do have an outline here, and I just kind of outline my book per each chapter, and I went in and looked at the number of words I'm going to have. So you can see here that I've basically finished the rough draft of the first chapter. I'm working on the rough draft of the second chapter now, and on each of these other chapters, what I end up doing is just leaving some notes about where that chapter is going to go. So here's a basic summary about what we're going to do, just some things to think about as I get to writing that part out, and then I can get a chance to see uh, and how, how everything's going. Now, you can tell here this is kind of the downside of it is, again, it's very much like text. So if I were doing this inside of um, uh, LibreOffice, for example, I might be highlighting the Bible verses and uh, maybe italicizing them. I might uh, make the references bold, and that way it'd be a lot easier. Additionally, there's subsections, so this would be a subheading, so I'd be using the appropriate uh, H2, H3 tags for our various subheadings that we have over this. And so these are certainly um, some downsides of it. Now, is this really a, a huge deal breaker for me? Uh, not really. I can just go ahead and... Uh, copy that text and create it into this, which I'll probably end up doing at some point in time anyway. Let's go ahead and paste that in. And um, I can go over here. Let's just make sure everything is body text for now. And then it'd be nice and easy for me to come in here and just uh, bold and italicize different things. Or usually what I might actually do is um, over inside of our style guides, I would come in and you know, maybe make these quotations. So let's find that. No, right there at the top. There you go. So I'm going to go ahead and put all these in a block quotation there. I'm going to bold all of these. And this way, anytime that I see something that uh, I might want to do, I can now much more easily do it. So it's actually not a deal breaker for me to use, um, to use the... Uh, uh, manuscript. And I like it. It actually is helping to organize uh, some of the thoughts that I have. So I'm going to keep that in mind. Uh, will I change to use a software-based approach? Uh, I'll be honest, I, I, 
I don't really know if I will or not. Uh, it's it's just a simple matter that I I tend to like um, uh, doing things on paper anyway. I I just personally get a little bit more out of it when I'm doing that. And you can kind of get the idea. So we just go down through there, save the document, and uh, we'd be good to go. But there is a very quick, brief review of this. Let's go ahead and have a look at how it exports. So let's go ahead and uh, compile it. And let's compile it first to an EPUB. And we'll see what the options are. Ignore compile status, exclude all. Here's separations between folders. We'll do an empty line. Do EPUB 3. Let's do a table of contents. Okay, so now it looks like we have everything exported. Let's go ahead and export this. And let's see what that looks like. So um, this is just the basic document reader built into Linux Mint. And the document reader built into Linux Mint does do eBooks pretty well. So you can see here it is actually giving us a little bit of basic formatting, but not a whole lot. Here's the finding a church chapter down here. Here's the section there. So that looks really good. Obviously needs a little bit better. I don't think I have any ebooks on this particular computer. Let me see if I happen to have any. I don't believe I have any ebooks on this particular computer. I could show you that uh, this application is very competent for reading ebooks. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at how it exports a uh, open document file. So once again, we'll do everything. Hit the export. And let's see how that looks in LibreOffice. So here is the title, here's the author, and then this one here is, let's see if they're actually using, so this is a heading one. This is a heading two. So it is actually working all of the headings properly when you export it, which is, which is really good. It is separating things out, so it's easy to see. I would just need to come in here and just do some final, uh, some final testing. So let's go back over here. We'll have a look back to our styles. Let's go back to our block quotation for that. So this does look like in some ways it can be a good time saver. It does look excellent as a means to organize your thoughts. Uh, obviously, if you're if you're using Linux, this is a good logical choice. If you do need the extra features, the extra layout inside of Scrivener, it's definitely worth having a look at. And uh, I don't know, maybe I think after using that a little bit, maybe I'll get one of the, my books written in that. And then uh, maybe I'll actually uh, pick up a uh, free trial of Scrivener just to see if I can get it working inside of Wine. I think one of the problems uh, that I've heard about it uh, with trying to get it configured to run in Wine is that every single time you run a test, it counts against your free trial. So I don't know, I might have to uh, grab it, get it to function, and then grab another free trial with another email address with the uh, with the functioning uh uh, functioning settings. But anyway, uh, there is a, a brief look at manuscript. So it is, uh, it is a nice little tool. Um, again, I'm just going to stick to my papers and pencils and notebooks. I just find myself a little bit more creative, especially when I can get away from all technology, sit in a field somewhere with a journal or something and then write down thoughts and ideas and summaries and things like that. But uh, I did want to leave this video for those people that have asked me about this. I've had a few people that have, and I am going to commit myself to writing this book in this platform. And um, maybe I'll do another video at the end once this is done and give you an update about what my thoughts were. So let me know your thoughts about Manuscript. Have you used it? Does this look like something you might want to use? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I hope that we have helped you to get your writing done right. <laughs>